patients reporting unsatisfactory interactions with their doctor or clinician and leaving appointments feeling as though their concerns or suggestions were dismissed. Patients have expressed a desire for materials that they can easily share with their doctor around the topic of recurrent and chronic UTI. If you've experienced this or you wish to share information about UTI with your doctor, you're in the right place. We've developed materials that you can easily share with your healthcare team to help guide discussion around UTI and lower urinary tract symptoms. Part of my role as the patient involvement advisor with Live UTI Free is to utilize the information gathered around UTI patient research to develop resources that may help bridge some of the communication gaps that occur between patient and clinician. With the launch of our clinician education resource, improving treatment pathways for patients with persistent lower urinary tract symptoms and the accompanying patient guide, we're taking steps to improve conversations between patient and clinician around the topic of difficult to diagnose UTIs. With the support of our clinical and research advisors, this clinician resource consolidates some of the most fundamental information pertaining to the urinary microbiome, beginning with the bladder not being a sterile environment, which is still a common misconception today. There are three parts to these resources, the clinician resource, a diagnostic directory, and a patient guide to help you prepare for your appointment. Out of the three, it'll be most helpful for you to review the patient guide. There's a link to that in the description. While it's not necessary for you to review in detail the educational resource intended for your doctor, it can be helpful for you to have an idea of the topics covered so you know what you're requesting your clinician review. Some of the information gets pretty in depth. So I'm gonna take you through the topics so you can have an understanding of what your clinician will receive should you choose to share this resource with them, and we hope you will. First topic up, as I mentioned, the bladder is not sterile. In 2013, researchers concluded that urine contains communities of living bacteria. This was one of the earlier studies that was able to definitively change a long-held belief that the bladder is sterile. We've only known this information for a little over a decade, so it's easy to see why medicine can be a bit behind when it comes to accurately diagnosing urinary tract infections. Taking this information a step further, researchers were also able to determine that although both symptomatic and asymptomatic people have bacteria present in their bladder and urinary tract, people with urinary symptoms typically have a more diverse urinary microbiome, or urobiome for short. So if we all have bacteria naturally present in our bladders, then how can we have negative cultures or dipsticks? Standard urine cultures, or appropriately, SUC, or SUC for short, were never intended to detect UTIs. They were actually developed to monitor the risk of kidney infections, and they have a bias toward E. coli and other gram-negative organisms. When compared to more sensitive testing methods, which we'll get into in a bit, SUC has been shown to be up to 90% inaccurate. This can result in what is considered a culture-negative UTI. SUC has a high threshold meaning that a large amount of bacteria needs to be grown from the tiny amount of urine tested in order for results to be positive. And when multiple organisms are detected, which could be an indication of an infection, SUC typically reports those possible infections as contamination or mixed growth. An additional limitation of SUC is its inability to detect organisms hiding within biofilm. Biofilm is a sticky coating that can protect bacteria. We have a whole section dedicated to biofilm later in the resource, but for urine culture purposes, when biofilm managed to break away from the bladder wall and end up in a urine sample, SUC is unable to shake loose the organisms contained inside. This means that those organisms within the biofilm may be completely missed by SUC, even though they could be contributing to symptoms. If you're thinking urine dipsticks that provide on-the-spot results in your doctor's office or at home are any more precise, Unfortunately, they're not. With poor detection capabilities, dipsticks are also unreliable. While both SUC and dipsticks may be used to diagnose an infection, they cannot be relied upon to rule out an infection. This slides us right into the next section, which is overcoming the limitations of SUC. Looking at a study comparing patients treated according to either SUC or an advanced detection method known as next generation sequencing or NGS, Patients who were treated according to NGS results reported significantly higher symptom improvement than those treated according to SUC results. This section of the clinician resource dives into alternative testing methods and provides insight around potential treatment improvements when an alternative to SUC is utilized. 
Equuk is an expanded quantitative urine culture, which is similar to suck, but it adjusts conditions to improve detection of organisms that suck is unable to detect. So the results more closely represent the sample bacterial community. Equuk is the method used in many of the studies that look into the urinary microbiome. Fresh urine microscopy is when your doctor or someone familiar with microbiology examines your urine on the spot once you've provided a sample. In addition to being able to detect bacteria, microscopy also looks for signs that your immune system is responding to an infection, such as the presence of white blood cells or tissue cells shed in the sample. The bladder begins shedding its lining in as little as six hours after exposure to bacterial strains, and this might be visible through microscopy. Polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, is a term you're likely familiar with due to its use in COVID testing. PCR testing magnifies small sections of microbial DNA and compares these sections to a panel of pre-selected organisms. The limitation of this method is that if one of the organisms contributing to your symptoms is not included on the panel, you and your doctor will remain unaware of its presence. Next generation sequencing, or NGS, also looks for bacterial DNA, but because the DNA strains are individually sequenced, there are no panels of pre-selected organisms. Instead, Databases upward of 50,000 organisms are used to compare the urine sample DNA and identify pathogens. However, using more sensitive tests, such as NGS, comes with a risk of information overload. Clinicians may be unfamiliar with how to interpret the results and what organisms to target in treatment. When using tests that can pick up a lot of organisms, it's important to remember the first topic. The bladder is not sterile. The goal of treatment should not be to rid the urinary tract of all organisms, but to achieve a state of balance individual to you. And some of these testing methods may help in achieving that goal. We've laid out the characteristics of each testing method in an included comparison chart, so you and your clinician can easily view the distinctions. Speaking of identifying organisms that may need to be treated or left alone, let's talk about contamination versus polymicrobial infections. In a study using EQUAC, that's the more sensitive culture method, in 81% of the samples in which E. coli was detected, at least one additional pathogen was also found. This suggests that UTIs often believed to be caused by one dominant pathogen may in fact be due to multiple organisms. What about when you receive a SUC report labeled mixed growth or contamination? These results do not necessarily indicate contamination, but they could be identifying infections with multiple pathogens that the lab is failing to report. When the limitations of standard urine culture are removed, the opportunity for more informed decision-making between you and your doctor arises. In addition to more accurately identifying organisms within the urobiome, more sensitive testing methods can also play an important role in detecting possible resistance behaviors. But before we get into the various antibiotic susceptibility testing methods, we need to touch on something called horizontal gene transfer. This can result in the antibiotic resistance traits of one organism being shared with another. In essence, an organism on its own may not be resistant to a particular antibiotic, but once in the presence of another organism, it may develop resistance characteristics. The most common type of antibiotic resistance and susceptibility testing is that which is typically completed alongside SUC. With traditional antibiotic susceptibility testing, or AST, Individual pathogens are tested against an antibiotic. As we now know, organisms impact and interact with one another, especially when it comes to resistance. When susceptibility tests are completed without consideration of the other organisms, treatment success may be reduced. This is where pooled antibiotic susceptibility testing steps in. Pooled AST considers the interactions between organisms and tests antibiotics against the entire bacterial community found in the sample to determine overall susceptibility. This may more closely resemble how the bacterial community might respond to treatment. The final type of resistance testing is identifying resistance genes. Testing for resistance genes can be helpful in making treatment recommendations, but due to interactions between organisms, it cannot guarantee whether an antibiotic treatment will or won't be effective. And it's important to note that none of these methods can predict how you, the patient, may respond to a treatment. We couldn't develop a resource about culture-negative UTIs without touching on the symptoms. 
you're likely familiar with the overlap of symptoms between the various urinary conditions, such as interstitial cystitis or painful bladder syndrome, overactive bladder, and recurrent or chronic UTI. The clinician resource addresses these commonalities and presents to your doctor the possibility of a UTI having been misdiagnosed as another bladder condition because of the limitations around UTI testing. For instance, in one study with IC patients, almost 50% of participants who underwent antibiotic treatment for 18 weeks reported a reduction in urgency, pain, or overall symptoms. This is compared to 24% of participants who reported improvement after receiving a placebo for the same length of time. This is not to say that all patients who have been diagnosed with another bladder condition have an undiagnosed UTI but rather that a culture negative UTI should be considered as part of a complete diagnostic workup. I mentioned biofilm earlier when discussing sex inability to detect organisms within epithelial cells or encased within biofilm. Biofilm is a protective coating, a slime really, that surrounds bacterial communities and sticks to and inside surfaces. We naturally have biofilm on and throughout our bodies but it can become an issue when it's in excess or harboring bacteria that your body is unable to manage. At some point, biofilms burst open and the organisms that were inside are released. If the body's immune system is unable to handle the release of bacteria, they may continue dividing and or burrow into the cells of the bladder wall and result in symptoms. Coli specifically is a high biofilm producing organism with 62% of E. coli infections having been shown to produce biofilm. Biofilm producing E. coli is also nearly twice as likely to be multi-drug resistant compared to E. coli that doesn't produce biofilm. Aside from protecting bacteria, biofilm influences bacteria in a variety of ways and may contribute to antibiotic resistance. Having similar qualities to biofilm, intracellular bacterial communities are communities of bacteria that burrow into the walls of the bladder. They're difficult to detect with standard culture because even when bladder tissue sheds into a urine sample, the culture does not encourage those organisms to release from the cells. As many as 100,000 colony forming units can exist inside one cell. So consider this, 100,000 colony forming units is the standard cutoff for urine cultures. And all of those units could be hiding in just a single cell. That sums up the research portion of the clinician resource. My hope is that you feel more prepared to share this information with your healthcare team now that you have an understanding of what's included. I'm sure you noticed that a big chunk of this resource is dedicated to the limitations around standard testing methods. That's because for many with lower urinary tract symptoms, proper treatment begins with a proper diagnosis. At the end of this resource, we've included a list of US and UK diagnostic laboratories that utilize more sensitive testing methods, such as EQUAC and molecular tests. Each company is supportive of the work we do at Live UTI Free and has shown a commitment to improving patient outcomes. Third asset of this Take to Your Doctor resource and created just for you is a patient guide that provides you with tools and insights to help guide interactions with your doctor. We worked with our clinical team and patients in the community to develop a list of recommended steps that encourage open dialogue around the topic of difficult to diagnose UTI. Many of these tips can also be applied to other discussions you'd like to have with your healthcare providers. You can find a link to our video explaining how to use this guide in the description below, as well as download links for the entire resource. We'd love to hear from you once you've had a chance to check out the materials and share them with your doctor. Thank you for being part of the Live UTI Free community. Thank you.